Hello, everyone. My name is Ken Coates. I'm a Canada Research Chair in Regional Innovation at the University of Saskatchewan. My research focuses on how we can use modern technologies to help small towns and rural areas adapt to the realities of the 21st century. Um, when I introduce myself, I say the most important thing is that I'm from Whitehorse, Yukon. I raised there. It's my home community. But I'm also equally proud of the fact that I've lived in 14 other uh, cities across the country, from Banff to Prince George, from Victoria to Brandon, Manitoba, from St. John to Saskatoon and Waterloo. Um, I admire the passion. You are the most important level of government in Canada. Um, the other governments don't understand that. And when I, I look at other places around the world, I spend a lot of time in Japan, and I see places that do understand the importance of local government. I have a real sense of appreciation for what you do and what you contribute. Um, my favorite word, we all have our favorite words, and mine is topophilia. Um, I'm, I'm assuming most of you have no idea why I have a word like that. But topophilia means love of place. It means love of place. Um, it captures something that's actually really hard to describe. Why do I say Whitehurst is so important to me? Partly is because I was raised there. I'm nostalgic about the fact that I, when, I, when I weighed 120 pounds, um, I'm excited about what it meant to me, my friends and my colleagues, and the way I grew up in those areas. But we have a special bond to a specific place. We feel certain ways about one or two places in the world that just make us feel as though we actually, actually belong. It's geography, it's family, it's culture, it's history, it's actually who we are. We face a time when that sense of place is very much under attack, where our connection to place is being uprooted, partly because we're so mobile, partly because there's so much change going on. But the reality is, is that every one of us wants to be part of something great. We want to be something great in our families, but greater beyond in our communities. We live in a modern world, we just saw some descriptions here, where it's, an, it's anonymous, it's divided, it, people are separated, they're hiding behind their computer screens, they're spending too much time on your smartphones, though I notice you are not doing that. I appreciate it greatly. We are in the period of great technological change. Technological change has capacity to improve our quality of life. Smart cities, great technologies, wonderful things being done, just fantastic. But technology is also something that's equally good and bad. It will cause and has caused enormous disruptions. We will see that continue to happen in the future. If you are not monitoring in your communities the impact on work, the way in which technology is changing jobs, then you're not paying attention to the future. The estimates are that between 25 and 50 percent of North American jobs will be replaced by new technologies. I'm personally convinced that we'll not replace anywhere near as many jobs as we'll lose, that this is a job killer in the process as we go down the line. So you have major choices, and we're really good here at telling you what to do, so I'm going to join up with my other friends and colleagues here doing the same sort of thing. Um, but how do we understand the role of technology, and how do we make it work for our communities? So job loss and job creation, All of, some of you, half of you, I guarantee half of you in the room are struggling with the loss of manufacturing and other activities in your communities. Um, I lived in Kitchener-Waterloo when we lost 12,000 jobs in one month at a manufacturing centre and experienced that. We're seeing new jobs being created. If you're in Montreal or Vancouver, the animation sector is expanding very rapidly and producing great opportunities for everybody. We're seeing the massive dislocation of traditional media. We've lost 250 community newspapers in Canada in the last 10 years. We'll probably lose more than that in the next 10 years. And we always talk about how not to worry we have social media. Social media does not replace the traditional news source, does not replace our communication system of local radio and local newspapers. We're seeing new technologies undermine existing businesses. And those of you that live in small towns will see smaller your, your stores closing down hardware stores stopping operations. We've lost most of the bookstores in Canada as a consequence of new technologies. But we'll also see other parts of our communities reaching out to global markets. I was just in Nova Scotia and Cape Breton Island and visited four indigenous communities in the area. They're very actively engaged in selling their fish products overseas. Absolutely fantastic. So the question is, can we actually control our future? Is this something that just happens? We sit back and watch it and nothing much we can do. So I'd suggest a few things. Focus on the future. Start thinking about the future in your communities on a regular basis. Do you, are you going to accept autonomous vehicles? 
How about drones and the use of you have regulations for drones? What are you planning for robots and 3D printing in your communities? What's going to happen when the artificial intelligence revolution comes on and the Internet of Things actually starts dislocating jobs and opportunities? What you need to do, I think, is find a way to make the future a common ground. If you haven't, many communities are trying this. I um, had a lot of time to work with the folks in Stratford, Ontario, who've made the future a place to sort of look at with enthusiasm and really impressed with what they're doing now in Kelowna. Have open discussions about your technological plans. What are you hoping to do in the future? Where are things going? Watch what they did in Olds, Alberta, a small rural community where they basically decided everybody would have one gigabyte speed to their homes as a way of retaining me at the front edge of technology, a really, truly impressive accomplishment. And watch what they're doing the same thing in Caslow, British Columbia, a small little community way off, not quite off the grid, but getting pretty close to it as we go forward. Focus on the people at risk. You're losing jobs, particularly for young men. Moderately skilled young men are not going to have the futures that we had in our generation, particularly in manufacturing and the resource sector. Take a look at the job losses in Fort McMurray and across Alberta and, and share some of their dislocation. Watch what happened in, Oz, in Oshawa, Ontario, where the factories started to close down, and in Pembroke, Ontario, and watch what the regional colleges are doing to try to revitalize these communities. You have to monitor and discuss technological change. You must not let technology be imposed on you. Passivity is not a solution in this environment. Communities don't really understand what's happening. The changes are so rapid and so fast, they're so technological and complicated, and we wake up one day with something we didn't want. Did we want social media to undermine the global political process as profoundly as it has? Did we really want Facebook and Google to have the dominant power? These are multi-billion dollar corporations that are exercising staggering influence over what we know, what we learn, how we shop, what we do. Did we want that? No. Did we talk about it? No. Has it happened? Absolutely. There are places that are doing this. Again, Kitchener-Waterloo has ongoing debates and discussions about what's actually going on in the field. Saskatchewan, the agricultural sector, and one of my favorite places, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, which is doing some really interesting work on new technologies. So validate your key communication tools. Look and see what actually works. Follow the models of Tweed and Prince Edward County, both in Ontario. Do something that you haven't probably done very much. Connect with your diaspora. We always think of community as people who are currently living there. My friends from Whitehorse know that I talk about Whitehorse all the time. I am as much a community member now. I moved away in 1974. It still defines who I am. Connect up, follow the models of Cassiar, British Columbia. Follow what the Yukon does. Look at what's going on in small town Manitoba, where they're connecting up with people who've left and drawing them back into a sense of planning community features, futures. Celebrate those who left. Make sure they feel part of your community. You are trying to create successful communities, and many of you are succeeding extremely well. But remember that technology will heighten the opportunities and also heighten the dangers. The next 20 years have the opportunity to be very positive and constructive and extremely destructive and worrisome if we just let it happen. Well-being relies on topophilia. Sustainability relies on topophilia. You must love your place. You would not be in your seats and in your offices and running for public life if you did not love your place. How do you draw everybody else into that world? Use technology to sustain your communities. Use technology to recreate your communities. Use technology to expand your communities. Make sure that you do not simply sit back and let technology define and control your future. That would be a dreadful outcome. Thanks, everyone.